requested um, I do believe that uh, foster chicken um, requested that I do a little bit of stitching so that you all can see my process um, fair warning I'm not gonna talk a lot through this one because I'm just gonna stitch um, just so you can see my process uh, this is probably gonna be a long video because you all are gonna deal with all of the things that I do everything from um, parking to starting and stopping and new threads and um, finishing threads and so I'm just going to stitch so I hope this helps everybody um, what I am specifically pointing out is she asked if I only stitch from left to right or if I cross country within the section that I'm focusing on and I wanted to let her know this is a very clear example I did this on purpose this morning so you could see this and I'd have an example um, as I stitch from left to right I fill in everything if I've got something on my thread that is above or on my needle that is the next stitch is above it and you can see here there's a stitch already done right here because that stitch was the next one in its instance and it was going down in a hole where there was already a stitch I'm okay doing that this is what I'm not okay doing this you put a stitch down in that hole and there's nothing there it doesn't bother you on that stitch what happens and you'll see it with this next one because I'm getting ready to do that this very stitch so you can see um, when you when you come up in a hole that has a thread already in it you split that stitch and then because your thread is so long, well, mine are, I don't know if yours are, um, they actually will be abrasive against that thread the entire time you're pulling it through. Um, it tends to fray threads, it can break them, um, and it looks messy. This is why I don't do this section very often. Um, to avoid the problem of the splitting, if you can see, I put my fingernail right on that corner before I put that needle through it, okay? A, it stabilizes that other stitch, and I can still get the needle through. I have absolutely no solution for the fact that it is abrasive the entire time it comes up. Whoops, and I just... Hold it out. This was a new thread, guys, so this is me showing you how I started it. Well, I did it again. All right. <laughs> I made that really short. That's actually why this magnet is here, guys. Um, it's holding all of these little starts and stops out of the way. These short ones pop up more than the longer ones that are over here. And that was driving me nuts because it kept getting caught in this. So that's why the magnet is there. All right, we're gonna hold that this time. Darn it, I still bloody pulled it out. Obviously, if I accidentally do that on a stitch here or there, it's not the end of the world. Um, but I don't like doing that. Instead, I like where they butt up against each other. 
So my pattern, where is that? Um, just so you all know, I'm zoomed in on the cross stitch so you can see the cross stitch. Um, I have my pattern keeper on a tablet that's to the right of this video and all my colors to the left. Now, because this thread is already on this needle, and this stitch would be finished in a hole where there's already a stitch made. I go ahead and do that stitch. I will then take it to the next spot. And if that stitch is finished below it, then I will make it. And I continue that way until I have one that is not stitched. This is the next instance on this one. Let's see if you can see it right here. And as you can see, if I come up this one, I would finish it and there's a stitch there. So I'll finish it. and then go to the next one. Which happens to be over this one. Now, see, I come up this one. There is no finished stitched here. Stitch here. So at this point, I would park that thread there. All right, we are <laughs> off to the, what I call turtle races, because this is a slow process. <laughs>
Well, crap. Did I just do what I said? Nope. Okay. Here's another example. The thread here, that I, or the stitch here that I just did, was going down where a thread is parked. It's the only other time I will actually finish the stitch because there's already thread there. I'm not going to mess with it. It's not going to hurt anything. parked with the rest of the big ones that are on the page for later usage.
Okay, now this is something that I do. I've probably been doing a little bit during the video, but after I have finished a row, because I am so particular about stitches, I am pushing from the back and rubbing my finger across all those stitches that I just made. All that does is flatten everything out and make it nice and smooth. Um, oh, well, you're gonna see all kinds of dog hair, but that way I don't end up with any crazy bumps. You stay up there.
What am I doing? You all are wondering right now. Um, I'm supposed to come up. This thread is part with this purple color. So that means I have parked this brown thread in the wrong spot. finish the stitch since I know for a fact that's where that's supposed to go. just done with it so we are going to flip my work I gotta get my needle flip my work and in this case because it's in the back I'm flipping it over so I can <laughs> sorry <coughs> I'm flipping it over so I can thread it to bring it up and pretend that we're finishing it off because I have no idea what color it is. Don't care. I just want it finished and I will throw this thread away. And whenever that color is needed again, we'll pull it back out. So as you can tell, obviously I still screw up even with my method, um, which means I may have used the wrong color. I may have done the wrong stitch. Who knows? Um, it is what it is. And I just move on.
is a previously done one and the way I can tell is do you see how these threads have been aligned? Whereas these threads are twisted together in an individual. Let me get you an individual one so you can see it. Okay. They come twisted together. That's a full six strand. Okay. When I pull something off of the loop that I know has already been separated and run through magic thread or thread magic, I can tell because they're aligned instead of twisted. too short to go all the way across this row and I would have parked it in the next stitch which is over here somewhere but I think it is this one and it doesn't have a stitch below it so I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this off um, and something else to note I do not typically do anything right on the very edge like this because it may not get covered so I just don't, um, as you can see, I'm seriously lined up here. So I'm just going to go one below it, go one above it. So it's going to be a bigger tack stitch 
and then put the tail behind that. I only do that because of my own preference. You can do whatever you want. If this had a tack stitch here, I would have done what I did over here, which is just pull that tack stitch. It doesn't go anywhere. Um, in this case, it's hiding underneath my magnet, so it's not gonna hurt anything. It's not even gonna hurt anything if you don't stick. If you don't have magnets securing them down, it's not gonna go anywhere. Check the thread. You get to see my little jar that I keep. This is where I keep all my extra threads. And since it was the last thing that well, was in here. And it was huge. We'll pull that other color out. And we'll see if it happens to go here since it was supposed to be. Oh, it is. No, it isn't part of it. Sorry. These were actually these are actually antiques. Um, my grandmother gave them to me, and they're really, really cool. All the gold that you see on it is 22 karat gold, and I have a bunch of them, and I do mean a bunch.
all those <laughs> threads. If you haven't noticed, I have been parking all of these threads up here and I've just been leaving them. Um, I typically do that until all of a sudden they get all tangled and there's enough of them that it warrants pulling these apart and pulling this open and unwinding it and wrapping it up in there. do this every single solitary thread that I park because as you can see it takes a little bit of time and that would just waste a boatload of time I don't know if you all saw this but um, these things actually will stick together if you sit them on top of each other like that um, it helps keep them together um, especially if you have a wayward one like that one that keeps falling and they still just get tucked underneath my It just happens to be a tighter hole. If you all are sticking through me with, through this video with me, I am seriously impressed. Because I would think just watching me stitch would be boring. But you're seeing, obviously, I have a, a plan every time I stitch, and it doesn't always work out. I am human. I screw up. Oh, that is thick in the back. did the colors that are already parked uh, this stitch would be going from here all the way across back over to here um, that is a really long thread and this color goes across a lot of this so that would officially tuck those stitches in um, so I'm actually going to start this thread.
Okay, guys, because I did this stitch right here. The next one is up in here somewhere. Um, that is a really long way to travel from this section up and not get covered. So I'm actually going to bury it a little bit on the back. And I just run my needle under the stitches already made. And this is just getting parked. I think I finished that row. Yeah. Oh no, I've got that one that I've missed. I got six.
really. Check your darns. 